So the second half of this is compound interest. You do get a calculator for this. The reason this fits in with this unit is because it involves an exponential function. So here's what's about ready to happen. I'm gonna write this formula up here. You're all gonna freak out. Then I'm gonna explain what everything means and you're all gonna calm down. That's what's gonna happen. Okay, you ready? So here's your formula. A equals P parenthesis one plus R over N to the power nt. It's p parenthesis one plus r over n to the nth. So now I'm gonna tell you what all those letters mean because I realize it looks like the alphabet threw up on your paper. A is the amount or your answer. A is the answer. That's what you're looking for is how much do you end up with? So basically you're putting your money in the bank and you're seeing what amount you end up with you know, after the money is put in there to, to cook for a little while. P is the principal. That's what you start with. So that's how much money you have to begin with that you're going to put into your account. P is what we call the principal. Do you guys do this in economics? Yeah. Well, not really. But I know what oh, okay, cool. You've heard the word before. N is the number of times interest is compounded go ahead and write it and then i'll explain what it means it's the number of times interest is compounded that means when, when interest gets compounded that means that you take that interest you've earned we're not using the calculator yet okay and you add it into the total the more times it gets compounded the better it is for you because then you're taking a percentage of a larger number so if you earn a few dollars in interest, if you take that and add it into the total, now you're taking a percentage of a bigger number. Does this make sense? Okay. If you're earning money, it's good for you. If you're owing, if you're paying back a loan that you owe, it's actually bad because then you're paying more. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, number of times interest is compounded. I'm going to just do this part verbally so you don't have to write it all. If it says annually, that means N is one. Annually means once per year. With me there? Mm -hmm. Semi-annually is twice. N would be two. Quarterly, four. Monthly, 12. Okay, those are the ones you're going to see. All right? And then T is time. So that's the number of years that you're going to leave the money in the account. What you're going to do is just memorize the formula and plug numbers in and type it in the calculator. That's how this works. Okay. So all of the ingredients are going to be given to you. This is your recipe. You just put all the ingredients into the recipe, stir it together. You get your answer. Find the amount present in an account with initial principal of 700. So it's going to be 700 parentheses. It's P parentheses. One plus r over n now r oh i forgot to say r was rate i'm sorry r is the rate so what's our interest rate for this one okay now you have to scooch the decimal point over so instead of 3.5 it's 0 0.035 if you're like hey i'm scared i'm gonna forget to do that you'll remember because when you type it in, you're going to get like billions of dollars and you're going to be like, hey, wait a second, this isn't right. Okay. So you scooch the decimal point over. So 0 0.035 um, over N. Let's see, what is N for this one? It says compounded quarterly. So N is four and it's to the power N, N times T. So that would be four times how many years? Five. Okay. And what you are going to do is just slam that in your calculator, put a dollar sign in front, and that's your answer. Okay, now I'm going to type it as well. And you can compare with each other. If you hit alpha y equals, watch me do this real quick. If you hit alpha y equals n over d means numerator over denominator, it'll give you that fancy fraction bar that's alpha y equals. If you want to write alpha y equals in your notes somewhere to make sure you remember that because that's helpful. I recommend it because if not, you're going to have to use more parentheses. And then for the exponent, you can type four times five, or you can just do four times five is 20 in your head either way. 
Um, now, an answer that would make sense. If you started with $700 and you earned some interest, you should get an answer that's slightly more than 700, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get like 9 billion, that's wrong. Or if you get something less than 700, that's wrong. Like use your common sense, all right? So let's see, I got $833 and we'll round to two decimal points if it's money, we'll say in 24 cents. So that answer makes sense. Like you wanna make sure that the answer makes sense. So let's try that again. Find the amount present in an account. Um, how much are we putting in this time? 1,000. So if someone gave you $1,000 and you have nothing better to do with it than stick it in the account, right? Parenthesis, one plus, that's R over N. What's our interest rate for this one? Yeah, 10. So 0. 0.10 over N. It says compounded semi-annually. Now, annually would be once per year. So semi-annually is twice. So N is two and it's to the power int. N times T. So that would be two times three. Or you could just write six. I mean, two times three is six, whatever pleases you. But anyway, put a dollar sign, cash money, type it in your calculator and you will get your answer. So what's an answer that would make sense? Oh, more than a thousand, but not like 10 billion. Okay. But if you get an astronomically large answer or if you get something less than a thousand, then you made a mistake. You need me to look at your calculator? Okay. Now, if you wrote in nine cents, I would mark that correct, but the five is rounding that up, so I wrote 10 cents. Oh, do you guys know that at the gas station, this just made me think of this, do you ever see the price and then it has that like and nine tenths at the end? That's and nine tenths of a penny. So it's actually like your gas is actually a penny more than like what it's saying. Nine tenths of a penny. Just so you know. All right. So is everybody OK with the calculator? We're OK with the calculator. All right. Now, if it says. We're almost there, guys. Stick with me. If it says compounded annually, semi-annually, monthly, quarterly, any of that, you can figure out what N is. What if it says compounded continuously? So we're going to do limit as N goes to infinity. You want to approach compounding infinitely. And I'm going to change everything else in the formula to ones for us to look at this. And I need for you guys to stop talking over me. I changed everything else in the formula to ones so that we can look at this. Now, I want you to just watch. You don't have to type this. I want you to just watch what this comes out to be because I already typed it in my calculator and I want you to just watch. So I went to Y equals and I typed that in. Now I typed it with X's instead of N's because in the calculator you have the X variable key, but same thing. I'm gonna go to the table and I want N to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So as I scroll through, do you see what's happening to the numbers? We have 2.6, but do you see how it keeps on changing? Okay, we need to get to a point where it's not changing. So I'm gonna go to my table set. Instead of counting by ones, we should count by something larger because we wanna go to infinity. So let me try and count by tens and go back to my table. So do you see how it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? All right, but do you see how it's still changing on the other side? Like, I want to get to a point where those numbers aren't changing at all. Like, I'm going to know exactly what it comes out to. So I'm going to go back. I think if I count by a hundred, well, you know what? Let me just do a thousand. Let's count by a thousand. See what happens. I don't want to mess around. Oh, there we go. I think we got it this time. Yep, there we go. Do you see how it's not changing anymore? So that's what that comes out to. 2.718. And you can put dot, 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 because there would actually be more numbers after that going to go on forever. It's what's called an irrational number. Have you ever heard that word before? Irrational? I think it goes on forever. Now this number is called E and that is huge and you need to put hearts and stars and unicorns around that. That is the number E. You actually have some familiarity with things like this. You've done this forever. Pi. What is pi approximately? 
3.1415 dot 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 forever and ever and ever, but we call it pi. Extension question, do you know where pi comes from? Like why it's 3.1415? Yeah. If you take a circle of any size, big or small, if you take the circumference, do you know what the circumference is? Yeah. Right? Divided by the diameter, you will get 3.1415. That's where that comes from. And this is where E comes from. Um, and frankly, I don't really care if you memorize why that is what it is. But if you know that E is about 2.718, I'm happy. If you know it's a number, I'm happy. Okay. So if you are compounding continuously, this is your formula. And no one ever has problem memorizing that one because it's pert. So if it says compounding continuously, you use PERT, the one with the E in it. Now I made these problems the exact same as the other ones we did, except I said compounding continuously. So do you think the answer will be more or less by a little bit than what we got for these two answers? It'll be very, very slightly more because you're compounding more times continuously. All right, so let's do the first one. Um, how much money did we put in the bank? for that one, all right, 700. E to the power R times T, it's pert. So what was our interest rate for this one? Okay, so that would be 0 0.035 times T, time is five years. I'm gonna show you how to type it. So just look. Just watch me do this first and then you can go type it. I'm gonna put 700, watch me point to it. E is this button right here. The button itself says LN, but do you see how right above it, it says E? Do you see where I'm pointing right there? It's kind of next to the four. How do you get what's above the button? Second, so you're gonna hit second LN, second LN. So type 700, second LN, and it even gives you the exponent. Isn't that cool? All right, and then what are we gonna type in that exponent? Um, 0 0.035 times five. Hit enter, that'll give you your answer. It should be slightly more than 833. That's what we got for the other one. Compounding continuously will give you a slightly larger number. So it should be a little bit more than 833 and 24 cents. Yeah, 833 and 87 cents. That wasn't a super dramatic change because the interest rate was only three and a half percent. For the other one, the interest rate is 10%. So it'll be a little bit more dramatic. You'll be able to see a bigger change. But did you find the E button? Okay. Second LN. E is about how much? 2.7. If you know it's a number about 2.7, I'm thrilled. That's what you need to know is that it's a number. So let's try that last one. I hear you guys typing it already. How much did we put in this account? A right, thousand, it says compounding continuously. So that's the PERT formula, E to the power R times T. So our interest rate is 0.10 times three years. You're just gonna put that in the calculator, get your answer. And you should get an answer slightly bigger than the other one. What was the other one we got, 1,340? So you should get something a little bit bigger than 1,340 because when you compound continuously, it'll give you a little bit more. There, 1,349 and 86 cents. I heard you guys tapping. You were ahead of me, some of you. Did you get that? Okay. Because calculators are great, but if you hit even one button wrong, it's not going to give you the right answer. So, you know, calculators can be both good and bad. You're all flipping the paper over, but are you sure you're okay? I, I can't see all your calculator screens, so it just makes me nervous. I'm like, all right, hope everybody's good. Now, we did this before. The only difference with this one is that the base number is E. So listen, when we do our table, instead of getting three values, you're only going to be able to do one, because this is now non-calculator again. The only thing you get the calculator for is those interest problems, so set that aside, right? Without a calculator, the only one you can do is e to the zero, because what is anything to the zero power? One. Unless you can do 2.718 squared and 2.718 to the third in your head without a calculator, that's the only one you can do, okay? Um, but let's start with the asymptote. Did this graph move up or down at all? No. Oh, so where does that mean it is? 
zero. It's on zero. Good. But it did go right five, which is going to come up in just a second. So hold on to that. This will still be zero, though. Because it didn't move up or down. So it's on zero. Now, the reason that right five is important is the number that we want to plug in is five. You're only going to be able to do one without a calculator. Again, unless you can do 2.7 to different powers in your head without a calculator, which let me know if you can do that because that's really impressive. Um, the only one you're going to be able to do is zero. So if you plug in five, five minus five, zero. E to the zero, one times a half is a half. One times a half is a half. So when you plot that, five comma a half, it's right here. Now, this is the part where everybody goes, and now what? Miss Cole, we have an invisible line and one point. The graph either goes up or down. Those are your only two options. Do you see a reflection or a negative anywhere in this problem? No. So what do you think it does? It goes up. So you're going to connect through that point and just go up. It either goes up or goes down. Those are the only options. Because I know everyone's like, Miss Cole, there's one point. What on earth do we do? Well, it either goes up or down. Okay. And then once you have that, you can answer all the questions. Domain is everything. It's actually less work because you only do one point. What's your range? Zero to infinity, no brackets. Oh, X intercept. That's kind of interesting. None. That's okay. Y intercept. This is kind of cool too. I like this. Some people like this and some people do it. I hope you'll get on board. Do you see how it does touch the Y axis, but it's this super teeny tiny decimal? So it's going to be zero comma, whatever that is. Watch me point to this. Zero minus five. If you plugged in zero, zero minus five, negative five, e to the negative five without a calculator. I have no idea what 2.7 to the power negative five is. So you get to leave it one half e to the negative five. That's a number. I just don't know what it is without a calculator. It's one half times 2.7 to the power negative five. But you get to just leave it like that. Isn't that cool? It's cool, guys. It's cool. You get to just write it like that? It's fun. All right, increasing or decreasing? All right, increasing. Decreasing is none. And then the ends. So again, one end will go towards the asymptote, which in this case is zero. The other one will go either up or down. So where does the left end go? At zero. And the right end is positive. And we'll do one more. You can make it, I promise. So that last one, did it move up or down at all? Yes, it went up three. Always just do that first. Like get the asymptote in there and just put that on your list. Like that part's done. Now you can only do one number. Now, if you plug in negative one, you would get negative negative one and then e to the one, which is 2.718, da, 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 which I don't want to plot. So let's do zero. You can't negative a zero, so it still just be zero. e to the zero power, one, good, plus three is four. So you get zero, four. And once again, that is where everybody's like, Miss Cole, now what? And I 100% get that. It either goes up or goes down. <laughs> Is there a negative in the problem, like a reflection? Yeah. Yes, so it's going to go down. It's because of this right here. But listen to me. If you made it go up, I would take off half a point for you making it go the wrong way. And if all of everything you wrote here matches the graph you drew, you get credit for all of it. Does that make sense? Because that's a tiny, tiny, tiny error in my opinion. So you would only lose half a point and everything else would be fine. 
So it's okay. All right, domain is everything. Range is three to infinity. X intercept again is none. There just isn't one. The Y intercept came out nice this time. Zero, four. However, if it didn't, it would be zero comma whatever you get when you plug in zero and you just leave it alone. Like literally just do nothing. All right, increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, increasing is none. Some of you write so fast. I'm trying to keep up to some of you. Wait for me. Where does the left arrow point? Positive infinity and the right arrow, bless you, three. 